Hi, I'm Bill Beto and welcome back to Empyreon Alpha 10. We're currently approaching Lyakum Moon. The same for as vaguely daylight. And we'll see what this has to offer for us. And we may take down a a drone or two, you never know. What's the gravity? 0.42. We'll be alright with that. So this is a lava planet, so it could be quite warm. Um, if I just land in this crater, what do we get? 30? Oh, that's not bad. Can live with that. Now, how much pentoxid have I got? That's um, 75. And what am I carrying? 33 and 22. So I've got a bit of pentaxid, but I am going to get through quite a lot just trundling around. And it doesn't take long to mine out a small pentaxid deposit, so let's just do that. Launch the drone, tab tab, get the drill, and where is the pentaxid deposit? It's behind me. And there's the ore nodule. Let's click it ore to get the auto level off. Because that's not very helpful when you're going straight down. Oh wow. <laughs> well that didn't take long, did it? Uh, how much did we get? Ten. Yeah. Don't really need iron, I don't think. Magnesium. Yeah, I might do magnesium. That drone's just popped in, so we'll shoot that. Oh, I'll try. There we go. That was a few little bits. Now, sometimes if I see lots of little promethium nodes lying around, I find it quite hard to resist going to pick them up because it's just a free, um, constantly renewable source of pentaxid. I've been playing on the Nemesis multiplayer server and uh, that's quite good fun. But I'm kind of in the habit of trying to use up renewable resources. Wow, that was hot. 140, 150, wow. Okay, so I presume this is sort of crusty lava, lava surface, and you don't want to be on it for too long. So we've got three energy matrix, two motors, six sniper rifle rounds. Oh, that's all right. Let's go to input, pop that there, and let's actually start making some more, um, some more fuel for the pentaxid tank. So that can be sort of doing that its thing as we're flying around. Okay, so I'm going to need to be careful that I don't melt as I um, collect stuff from this moon. There's no sign of hostility though, which is handy. See something on my radar to the east. Goodness knows what. I think now they've taken off the. Um, at one point there was a little rectangle showing up at where, where deposits were on the map. Um, but I think in one of the updates to Alpha 10 they've removed that. So you can no longer look at the map and actually see where deposits are going to be. So. Um, for instance, that magnesium deposit would have had a little rectangle around it showing a no build zone. And uh, you couldn't tell it was magnesium there, but you could tell that it was an ore deposit. And that's been taken away. Which makes sense because that's, that's kind of cheeky, isn't it? Uh, let's put night vision on. I know some people don't like the colour of the night vision, but I find it very easy to <coughs> see. Uh, 
see what's what. Let's take down this drone. Let's just see, we discovered several things there. Silicon, Promethium. Nothing drone related. <coughs> Sorry about that. How am I doing for Promethium? Not a huge amount on me. Um, let's put that stuff in there. So I may do a bit of Promethium mining. There we go. Again, I don't think this will take very long. What's our temperature? Just, just a negative. That's okay. Depending on how quickly I go through this, I may not do the whole thing. So a little bit of Promethium ore goes a long way. Um, there's another big one there. 23. This is just so fast to do. Yeah, as I said in the previous video, some people prefer the huge ore deposit where you just want to drill around indefinitely. But how anybody can't doesn't prefer this form of mining, I just don't know. It's fast, it's fun, it chase down the ore deposit, and you get loads of ore very quickly. I think that's it. Yep, there's no ore deposit on the map. So we've got 314 ore in no time at all. Awesome. Let's put that in there as well. And it's made the Pentaxid. So oh, we've got loads. Loads and loads and loads. I'll keep that for emergency sort of backup. Where's my Pentaxid tank? How much will go in there? Oh, excellent. So yes, we're way over. For some reason it lets you put in more than you can... Yeah. Oh, fuel. We don't want to run out of fuel, that's always embarrassing. And it's not a good idea to suffocate either. And we'll have some food. Cool. Let's put the night vision back on. And head off east. That's just the lights, that's the night vision. A cobalt deposit. I can't remember if I need cobalt or not. Oh, there's a drone. Watch out for the drones. Got him before he shot me. Let's just reload. A few bits and bobs. The temperature is enormously hot. Uh, but we're actually on the cobalt deposit. Instead on my ship, I'm not hot. So just being slightly off the ground, it's actually the ground that's hot. Um, let's see how far it is to the cobalt deposit. To be honest, if we can go through it that fast. Let's take that off. Where is the deposit? It's over this way. It's a small deposit, so I shouldn't have to go down too low to get to it. Yeah, I think I was missing it altogether. Oh, well, that's really quick to pick up, isn't it? So, I'll just pick up a bit of cobalt. Doesn't hurt to have some extra crushed stone. Yeah, so this is just point your drill at the same bit of land for ages until it decides to mine it. I just don't see how this is better than the pop rock mining. I just don't get that at all. 
At one point they were intending to make all of the others pop rock mining, but loads of people whinged about it, so. Takes all sorts, I suppose. But at least with the speed of the drills these days, it's not nowhere near as tedious as it used to be. There we go, almost done. We might as well, it's quite a small deposit, so we might as well mine the whole thing out. The only thing about the pop rock mining is you do need the ore scanner in your inventory. And that's the ore scanner in the top left there. If you haven't got that you can't see the pop rocks in the ground. And so then it's a nightmare. But it's these days you start off with the ore scanner so and they're easy enough to make if you don't. Uh just frustrating if you get to a deposit that's pop rocks and you haven't got an ore scanner in your inventory because you could mine around forever trying to find those little borders if you can't see them. Have we got that? I think we might have got that. Yep, there's no ore deposit on the map. So that we've got 330 cobalt, but I'm pretty sure that took a load longer to do. Than the Prometheum. Right. Not finding many POIs. Can I see Xyrox territory on the map? I'm going round in a circle now. So something to the north east, so let's head that way. <coughs> now I've been feeling maybe not invincible with my shield on, but uh, pretty pretty tough with my shield on. Um, so thanks to Mesmo for pointing out to me that um, some of the turrets on the POIs fire ion bolts that disable your shield temporarily. I did not know that. I should read the patch notes more carefully. Um, but that's good to know, because I will be more careful. A level 7 power station. You know what? I think we can probably take on a level 7 power station. Doesn't look like there's anything else there. Looks like that's probably the centre of the zone. There might be another POI behind it. Now... options, field of view. There isn't a zoom on this game, but the field of view can be changed to kind of give you a zoom. Now my rockets have a range of 408 metres, and that's only 350 metres away. Uh, so Pop up, fire, pop down, pop up, pop down, marvellous, do the same again. We've got, got that one. Are there any more guns on this thing? I don't think so. Bit look. Let's shoot that door out. There's a spawner there, so we'll shoot that out as well. 
If you have the advantage of having a space vehicle, you may as well use it. I can't see any drones, so we will just park up there. Uh, let's switch to a gun. Got a pulse rifle that's loaded and a shotgun that's loaded. Let's go to first person and let's put the view back because it's really weird running around. I think it's usually set to 60 actually. Yeah, I had it on 65, but. So nobody spawned there, so that's handy. <coughs> just a little bit. I don't know this POI that well, so I'm just being a. Oh! Oh! Lag! I don't know if I can blow these up with a shotgun. I can. Okay. So it lagged when the uh, Xyrax spawned. I think I think it's partially the, the lighting is quite demanding on computer systems. Um, let's have something to eat, which will give me a little bit of health. And our shotgun's reloaded, let's keep on trucking. There's a spawner. I don't think anything's spawned yet though. So. I hate the recoil they've added to these guns. And there's no way you can brace yourself or anything like that as far as I'm aware. So it just makes it a bit of a pain. No, what's that? There's another area. That's up, okay. There's a sensor up there on the hole. I'm not keen on sensors. doors here. Oh, I've gone around a circle. Okay. <coughs> so I guess the only way is up. Although it looks like there's a, a room in there somewhere. <coughs> Maybe it's just this elevator. Ah! That opens the... Ooh! Right, okay, a turret. And there's one turret. It's quite often two. What did that do? up okay <laughs> so oh we got some cobalt and some silicon that's awesome yeah let's pop some stuff in the ship oh we got some magnesium as well Too worried about what goes where. Food ration, they're always handy. One of those, we can sell that. A bit of fuel. What's in this locker? Oh, some armour. Armour sells for a small fortune, so that's quite handy. Or two. Take some more turrets and then get those. Wow. Guess that blew up the generators, which is a shame. 
and possibly the oxygen. Mm. Right, well, on the whole, I don't think I'm short of resources, so I don't think I really. Uh, ah, that's another level. Uh huh. So we've killed that. Oh, that's sneaky, isn't it? See, that's why I don't like sensors. That turret would have appeared from behind me and blown me to kingdom come. What's in here? Nine shotgun rounds, that's alright. Let's play with this base, why not? If we're not too hot on the ground, we'll just get we'll just clear our inventory. Devices output. Uh, we don't need all those bullets. Those blocks, we'll just eat that. Go to input, we'll pop that in input. That there. We'll go to uh, ammo box. Put that in there. <coughs> and then we'll get our drone. Now there's a neat little thing you can do to get resources. Essentially what you do is, you take away the ground layer of the base, any base. It's reloading. <coughs> and then when the base collapses because of the structural integrity, you can get lots and lots of resource. Which is nice. And I'm going to need quite a lot of resource to replace the bullets I've used up. And I've picked up some magnesium so I'll be able to replace some rockets as well. So that will all be good. And it doesn't take too long to do with the drone. I'm not too hot am I? No, I'm okay. So it used to be that if things collapsed, you just lost that resource. Uh, and because of the structural integrity, uh, quite often failures in the structural integrity that didn't make any sense at all, you would lose vast amounts of the resource that you'd gathered. But you've taken the time to take down a base and take it apart, you know, you should get the resource that you've um, worked for. But quite often you wouldn't get it. So they've changed it now so you can pick up debris, debris just by pressing whatever your collection key is. For me it's F, the default. So let's take these out. Just leaving the odd one. do is we'll just offload a whole load of stuff into input. There's the odd bit of stuff into output. And then we'll play Jenga with the bits. This is quite good fun with other people. 
because you can take blocks away one at a time until you see what causes the base to actually collapse. That should cl oh, did that not do it? Maybe it's these blocks are too close to the ground. Oh, I'm disappointing. At some point, this is just going to go because there's nothing actually attached to the ground. Sometimes it doesn't happen on the moon. I'm sure I'll take business apart on the moon in the fall down. Too close to my vehicle. Bit weird. No. Well, this is very strange. Because usually the entire base collapses. This one's just hanging in midair. Which is a bit strange. See, there's nothing there. Nothing there keeping it attached to the ground. So the whole thing should have collapsed. Not really sure why it hasn't. Oh, well, it, oh I sound like a huge chunk went, but I'm not sure where. Well, I think we've got enough of this base. I don't, if it's not going to collapse, I'm not going to faff on with it. Disappointing, though. Never mind. Right. Mysterious floating power station. <laughs> right. So, I think we've seen enough of this, this moon. Let's keep on going. And see if we can't... Um, Discover some new planets. Let's go more straight up. Our speed should increase. Right. So we are at Lyakum. Looks like our choices from Lea Coom are probably pretty limited. We can go to Sandarshi Vega Station or to Namak. Hmm. So let's go to Sandarshi Vega Station and then possibly off to Nilesh. Or Alid one or the other. Lock target. It's not too far away. We have plenty of pentaxes. We'll need to disable the shield before we warp. And off we go. So let's see what we've got <coughs> what we've got in this system. Oh, it's just the empty space. Okay. Let's try going straight ahead. See if I can find the station and mark it on the map. And whilst I'm doing that, let's have a puff of oxygen. Or two. 
or three. Then we'll go what I'll do. Well, we're coasting along at full speed and there's nothing. So whilst we're doing that, let's check the sector map. So I think next we'll go to Nilesh. We'll lock the target for that. So I'll give this another minute or so. Because if you're coming in from the outskirts of a system to... Oh, a boulder's just popped in. Now I could go and look at that boulder because that's almost certainly a resource. Ah, what's that? So that's a Polaris trading station. Awesome. Which doesn't show up on my map, so that's marvellous. Let's put a little marker in just beside me. Oh, Polaris trading station. Oh well, trading. Uh, I'll accept that. It's Polaris carrier, that's fine. I'm friendly with Polaris carriers. Now, was that the where was the boulder that popped in? I'm not sure if those are... I think those might be planets in the distance. I don't think they're boulders. Have I lost the boulder? Ah, I think I've lost it. Oh, well, never mind. Let's go to the next system. This is Nilesh. Uh, planet info, come on. Alright then, sector list. Planet info. <coughs> That's a desert planet. Where can we go from from the lesh? We can go to Alpol. Okay. Let's try that again. Alpol orb orbit. We've we've locked the target. Okay. Ah, just couldn't see the arrow. Come on, flip around. Get up the speed. And warp. So as you can see, you can get to most areas of the map um, just with the small vessel. Wow, that looks like a big planet. Orbit, we've got cobalt and gold asteroids. Don't think I've ever seen a cobalt, a gold asteroid. Alpol. There's, there's a medicine in the UK for small children. It's called Calpol. So, right. So that's iron, copper, neodymium, cobalt, promethium, and sathium. Arid, size four. And what about the moon? Promethium, pentaxid. Size three, another lava one. Okay. And what about Orsa? Orsa's temperate size five. We could grief. That's a big planet. With a restroom, Zascosium, and Prometheum. Hmm. That's interesting. And also Moon. Has the standard things that moons have. It's a snow moon. Oh, I quite like snow planets. 
Anyway. Let's go to auto orbit. Lock target. Let's zip away to Orsa. And any moment now, we will arrive. Wow, that is a big planet. That looks swampy. Uh, oh, it says temperate. Okay. And the moon's all the way over there. Let's go and have a quick look at this planet and let's put our shield back on. X for the shield. I prefer to enter atmosphere under my own steam. I don't like to still have the um, the brake off. It's alright to switch the cruise brake on and off, which is great in space because um, you use a tiny bit of fuel if you've got that off. But it's not so great when you're on a planet and you find yourself skittering all over the place. Like there's a lot of stuff to the west of us. Yes, this is a temperate planet, yeah, not swampy. And it's Tarn territory. Let's have a look at the map. Oh my word. Look at how tiny those squares are. This planet is absolutely enormous. Planet size very large. Oh, look at that. Oh my word. What's the gravity? 1.12. There you go. Wow, that will take forever to explore. Town outpost, whoa, town settlement. Right, we're not going to explore this on camera, we'd be here for days. Whoop. Getting a bit of lag stuff is rendering in. I saw something rather more interesting looking over here somewhere. Ruined landing pad. That over there. Crash DSE two mid. Yeah, we'll shoot this drone down. Awesome. So they're pretty easy drones. Quite a bit of radiated zone. That's handy for resources. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to explore a planet that size on camera because um, the planets are too empty. They didn't reduce the system Elyon did that meant that um, POIs only render in when you're in a certain distance from them. So my understanding is that the reason for doing that was that then you could have loads and loads of POIs. Um, but the planets are largely barren. And there isn't that much variety in POIs. Which is a shame because if um, Elyon asked the community to um, produce POIs for inclusion in the game, and provided some outlines. I'm sure they could have hundreds of different POIs with different styles and <coughs> it would be great. It would make the game much more interesting to play. Right. That's Snow Moon. Oh, let's go visit the Snow Moon. Is that it over there? That's it over there. So we'll have to go through the asteroid field and head to the moon. Uh, 
There we go. <coughs> so that's going to take a little while. So let's look at some of the loot we've picked up. Got lots of ammunition. We'll just stick this plate in here and that door and those we'll put in input. So we've picked up quite a lot of stuff because we didn't have we didn't have a great deal of this when we left home. Uh, I do like the little people that you can add to your base. So we'll do that when we get back. Yeah. It's been quite a successful run and we've got a load of a restroom as well. So that'll be good for the rocket turrets on our main base. Let's just check fuel and whatnot. That's okay. Put some more fuel in. Now there's a bit more oxygen. Now have I got any more oxygen on me? Oh, we'll have, yeah. Oh, we've got oxygen bottles as well, the big ones. That's cool, that's cool, we're all right. We'll run out of um, food before we run out of oxygen. So the ice planets quite often have ice golems on them and um, they're great for resources because they drop a, or at least they used to drop, a variety of uh, minerals and metals and all kinds of goodness. And I don't think this ice moon is quite as large as that planet, that is absolutely enormous. I really think Elion have done a good job with the terrain for the um, planets. They do look different from space, kind of unique. Different looks and feels and um, quite alien looking some of them. But this looks like perhaps the planet's been warmer at some point in the past. Or the moon's been warm out at some point in the past and water has flowed and created these channels in the landscape. I'm guessing that's probably not great for hover vehicles. Let's have a look. Let's see what there is to see. I was going to say, I thought I was going in on data. Wow, that is a totally frozen planetoid, isn't it? Oh, there was a drone back there. Presumably covering the Promethium deposit. So we'll go and shoot the drone and see what... Um, oh, missed it. Go and shoot the drone and see what level we're dealing with. One. Okay. Oh, well. Oh. That was a flux coil, I think. Yeah. This moon has these pentaxid deposits, so these give you two pentaxid raw materials, so that's four pentaxid um, refined. Now, some planets or moons have um, fields of those nodes, so actually it's just as quick to pick, if you find a field of those nodes, it's just as quick to pick them as it is to mine the pentaxid deposits out. I'm not sure the surface stuff is rendering in fast enough for me to see if I come across a field of those nodes. 
Is that one back there? Yeah, there's a couple. I've got a jetpack on because it switches it off before between them um, playfields. So I'm doing a lot of e exploring and that's using up my pentaxid. So although this is a little bit slow, it's worth just topping up the pentaxid as you go. Because what you don't want is to get stuck on a planet that's really hostile and not be able to get back. Boom. So yeah, I mean that was ten pentaxid just from those little nodes. I'm not going to hop out with every one I come across, but um, magnesium deposit. Yeah, a medium size. Oh, that drone shooting at me. In fact, it shot me because my shield was damaged. So that will have been guarding the uh, the magnesium. Another one. That's very small. Okay. Well, I think we've got the idea of what this planet's like. Um, because it's a moon, it's airless, so it hasn't got the the vegetation that the ice planets have. Um, so it's not as interesting, I don't think, but... Oh. Yeah, there's something not right about the way things are rendering in. I've noticed it on the multiplayer server I'm playing on, and on single player. So I don't think it's a... Just a little bug. Oh. Right. But the main purpose of today is to explore the system, so we'll head back into space. I may come back and spend some time on the planet below. Oh, what's happening there? Oh, that was weird. Right. Sector list, where can we go from Orsa? Hmm. We can go to Ossest. But we can't make that long jump the other way. Oh, let's do it anyway. Where's the marker? It's over there. And get up to speed. And take the shield off. And warp. Hopefully before we go into the planet's atmosphere. So I don't know if, if Ossest has um, warp channels to other areas or not. So, Ossest, Sector List, Ossest, Planet Info, the Snow Planet, Size 4, so that's pretty big. Not as big as that Size 5, but yeah. So, this has a, a long warp channel to Ilyava and to the Ustia asteroid field and to Taros. But the only one we can do in the small vehicle <coughs> is the one back to Orsa. So what I'll have to do <coughs> is go back to Orsa, back to Alpol, back to Nilesh, back to the Samadhi Vale, vale station, and then possibly off to Alid. So you can see as you double back, whilst none of these routes by themselves take lots of pentaxid because you've got a double back right around the whole route that's going to take a chunk quite a large chunk of my pentaxid so that's why I'm kind of keep picking it up as I find it and in fact speaking of that no let's go into the right thing P devices <coughs> input put some more pentaxid in there and let's go back to the constructor and let's turn all that into fuel as well. Cool. 
put the shield back on and I do like ice plants so we will go and have a look and we'll try and come in in daylight over a mountain range let's see let's head for that one over there so sometimes the ice planets have a whole field of those nodes on the top and you can pick up quite a lot of pentaxid from the tops of mountains on ice planets quite readily um, it may not be the case these days because so much changes from update to update <clears throat> I mean sometimes each um, going from say alpha 10.3 just to alpha 10.4 might be several pages of patch notes so it can be quite hard to <clears throat> keep on top of all the changes that happen which is not a complaint and the fact that Elion is so dedicated to um, updating and improving the game is uh, is awesome right <clears throat> let's head along to the steeper mountain range and this map's a little bit more civilized but this is still a really big mountain big planet There you go, you see. Mm -hmm. There's these little nodes all over the place. Well, let's put our jetpack on. <coughs> so even if you can't find um, a pentaxid deposit, it can be worth looking for these little pentaxid nodes which are just everywhere. There's another one over there, but... Um, I'm only going to stop if I see more together. What's this one? No, oh, that looks by, by itself. That's got one either side of the ship, so we'll just get those two. And because these are double nodes, you very rapidly build up a collection of pentaxids. That's 10 pentaxids just for those few. That's 20 refined pentaxids. Uh, awesome. And you can sometimes on the lava planets <coughs> find an area which is at a certain elevation. It's just below. It's like the foothills of the mountains on um, some lava planets. See that pentax deposit sort of node has just disappeared. But if I zip back, there it is. Yeah. <coughs> so on lava planets there's um sometimes an elevation which is like a plain of a foothill just below the mountains and just covered in these nodes of pentaxid. Like loads of them all together. So you can easily collect fifty, sixty, two or three hundred even pentaxid. Um, just in a space this kind of size here. Right, that's probably enough for now though. We'll just keep on going. Back to the space exploration. And we'll just check how much pentaxid fuel is in the pentaxid tank. Do those jumps to get back to a new planet and just see how much pentaxid that uses up. I think we'll find that uses quite a bit and that's why I'm keep picking up bits so sector list so yeah although there's several jumps from Ossest the only one we can do in a small vehicle is back to Orsa so let's lock target let's disable the shield let's look at how much fuel we've got 97 so we're on 97 so let's jump go 
So we're now at Orsa. The only way we can go from Orsa is back where we came from or to Alpol. So we'll go to Alpol. So remember we had 97 fuel when we started this warp section of warp leaps. That's the enormous planet. Oh, I, I appeared practically in an asteroid. How weird. I wonder what that was. <laughs> it wasn't the enormous planet. Right. <coughs> so, again from Alpol, all we can do is go back to Orsa or to Nilesh. So we'll go to Nilesh. And Nilesh is over here. Let's navigate our way between these boulders and warp. And then from Nilesh. So again from Nilesh, the only choices we've got are to go back to Alpol or to go back to the Sam Dashi Vega station. So we'll have to go back to the Sam Dashi Vega station. Although this line looks like it's going through Nilesh, it doesn't stop there. The lines always go directly from one place to the other. Alright. And... Off we go. Let's see what we've got from here. So yeah, even though the, the trading station doesn't show on the map, since I put that marker fairly close to it, we could probably find it again. But I'm not doing trading at the moment. So from here we do have choices. <coughs> we can go to Namak. Or we can go to Alid. And since we haven't been to Alid, let's go there. Lock target. Oh, we can only walk 15.2 units, okay. So we can't go that far. Hmm. So, oh, is that 15.0? Wow. So, to keep exploring, we'll have to, oh, it's 11.8 from here. Ah, I see, that's, I was getting that confused with that one. Right, so we can't go to Alid in a small vessel. We'll have to go back to Namak. That's a bit of a shame. For some reason I had it in my head that small vessels could do 16 astronomical units and it's only 15. Right. And then from Namak we can go back to Sulia. So we're kind of getting stuck now because then there's only towers the other side. Oh, have we actually been to towers? I can't remember. Let's go back to Sulia. Where's the arrow? It's off over here. So let's have a look and see how much fuel that's used. Uh, Helps me press the right thing. So that was 97. So we're down what 51. Yeah. So you do you do chew through the you do chew through the um, resources. So we're in Sulia orbit and we need to head back to Taros. So let's go there. Back to Taros, back to Target. Don't get rid of the map. Head the right way. Okay. 
So yes, to go much further in exploration terms, we will need a CV. And uh, that might be what we have a bash at next. But for now, let's just head back down to the planet. We'll put the shield back on. And we'll have something to eat. There we go. I don't really want to use the emergency rations if I don't if I don't have to. Let's just pop the uh items into there and the bullets we will put in the output. And then we're almost home. Almost home. <coughs> and we have explored <coughs> a really fair <coughs> fair percentage of the map just using our small vessel. Let's take the auto brake off with the I key and go in under our own power. I'm seven kilometres from base, so that's not too bad. Uh, let's go south a little bit just to uncover some more of the map whilst we're heading for home. So, we'll go home, we'll unload. What we've got there, is that an abandoned something with a reactor? I think it is. Um, yep, abandoned reactor. <coughs> I'll need, I've got the armour, might need a couple of better weapons and some more medical stuff to do that. I might do that in an episode, in an, in an episode before, before doing the CV, because that, taking that down would get us quite a lot of resource. The only trouble with those abandoned reactors is they have the scorpion things, and I hate the scorpion things. Yeah, we've un unravelled a bit more of the map. <coughs> unravelled? Opened up a bit more of the map. So. We shall see what we shall see. Now, I have in the past made my own CVs, but they take a lot of time and effort to produce. And unfortunately, when I changed computers, I, d I didn't think on to um, transfer the CVs across. So I'm now tending to use um, something called the Sky Explorer chassis, which um, somebody has created and put up on the workshop. And essentially, it's a, a bare-bones vessel which you can bring in quite early days, um, I think it's level 12, and then you fit that vessel out the way you want. So if you want to put loads of weapon points on, you can. If you want to put lots of grow plots in, you can. But they're not in to start with, which keeps the cost of bringing the ship in down, which, which kind of makes sense to me. Home sweet home. Let's level up and get close. Oh. Kinda wanna be it's just not quite wide enough this this higher. Right, so I will unload the green machine and we'll have a look at the SV next time. But what we might do instead of actually doing the SV is go and um, uh, take down a base 
or an abandoned item because that will give us more resources for the CV. So we'll do that next time and I'll see you then. Bye for now.